Good morning. We welcome you once again to our Golden Lamp Stand online service. It's so good to have you with us once again today. Today, let us prepare our hearts for the worship by reading Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 to 7. Let me read to you Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 to 7, reading from the third word, Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that the Lord Jesus Christ has died. He has risen and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And today, even as we proclaim this truth, let your blessing fall upon your people. We want to also pray that you anoint us with your Holy Spirit that as we worship you and as we meditate upon your word your truth will transform our lives in the Lord Jesus name we pray Amen
I'd like to share with you from John chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. And I've entitled my message, Blessed are those who believe. And we want to look at the life of Thomas and how he responded to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me start off by reading the text to you, John 20, verses 24 to 29. Now, Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hand, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to the disciples. We thank you that the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Thomas. And we thank you that he released his word upon our lives, saying that we who believe, even though we have not seen, we are so blessed. So we thank you and we praise you. And today, once again, as we meditate upon your word, we pray the Holy Spirit would speak into our hearts and that blessing that you imparted upon your disciples will come upon each one of us. In the Lord Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I would like to speak about what happened one week after the resurrection, today being the week after our resurrection celebration last week. We want to look at the life of one of the apostles. More specifically, we want to look into Thomas' life and his response to the resurrection. And the context is this, John speaks about the first group experience the Lord had with his disciples. And then from that experience, he moves on to the second experience, which was a week later. Let me read to you John 20, 19, the first experience on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. John 20, 26, the second time he meets the group, a week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them, though the doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace, be with you. So today we will be looking at the first group visit the Lord Jesus Christ had with his disciples and then we will move on to the second visit and during these two visits we would like to focus on the Apostle Thomas. And what I would like to do today is break this text into two parts and we will be looking at the two different parts. Point one, I will not believe it. Now, the first part is basically from verse 24 and 25. And in this text, we see Thomas boldly saying that he will not believe it. He will not believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24 and 25. Now, Thomas called Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail mark, in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. The first thing that I would like to do is make two clarifications concerning this narrative. And the first clarification is simply this verse 24 and 25 falls in between verse 19 and 26. Basically, what I'm saying is this, when the disciples met up with Thomas and explained to him that the Lord had resurrected, it not necessarily means that it happened on the first Sunday where the Lord had resurrected, but it could have happened anywhere between the first Sunday and also the following Sunday where the Lord met with the disciples as a group for the second time. 
The second clarification that I would like to make is that when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to the disciples, the first time he appeared to all of them, it was in the evening, but the second time it was not stated, so it doesn't necessarily mean that it was in the evening, but we know that they were once again behind locked doors, just as in verse 19, it says that they were behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jews again, the following week, they were behind locked doors. Now, let me start off by reading to you verse 24 again. Now, Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. And by these words, we know that the apostles were there. By apostles, I mean the twelve minus one. And then the disciples were there. And by disciples, I am speaking about a larger group made out of devout followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we are very clear that Thomas was not there. And I want to start off by saying John mentions 12. And when we read the other gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, after the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the other gospel writers always mention 11. But in this text, we see John mentions 12. Let me read a few quotations here. Mark 28, 16. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them. Mark 16 14 later jesus appeared to the leaven as they were eating he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen luke 24 9 when they came back from the tomb he told all these things to the eleven and to all the others luke 24 33 they got up and returned at once to jerusalem there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together so we read about the gospel writers always relating to the apostles after the resurrection as the eleven you read it another two times in the book of acts but here we see john refers to the twelve and everything that's written in the word of God is there for a purpose. Now, I also like to highlight this. John never used the word apostles in his whole gospel, and he never used it in any of his writings either. However, he did use it three times in the book of Revelation, where he was speaking about what God had revealed to him. Now, the word apostles appears nine times in the Gospels, and then it appears 33 times in the book of Acts, altogether 42 times with the Gospels and the book of Acts in the narratives, and it appears another 20 times in the epistles but yet we see John never used the expression apostles. He only mentions the number 12 in two different occasions. Here, when he's referring to Thomas being one of the 12, and another time in John chapter 6. And I would like to believe that he never used this expression simply because there was no need to make a distinction between the apostles and the rest except in these two situations. Now let's go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6 verses 66 to the end, verse 71. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus replied, Have I not chosen you, the twelve, yet one of you is the devil. He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, who though one of the twelve was later to betray him. Let me once again read verse 69 because verse 69 is the key to this text. The word of God says we believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. So it's only in these two situations that John saw the need to make 
a distinction between the 12 and the rest of the disciples. Here in the middle of the Lord Jesus Christ's ministry, he speaks about Judas who was going to betray the Lord Jesus Christ and towards the end after the resurrection, he speaks about Thomas who refused to believe even though the Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected. So what I would like to share with you is that the 12 were required to have a different level of belief. When the Lord chooses people to serve him, those who are specially anointed are expected to have a different level of belief. But in this situation, once again, as we move on to verse 25, we see Thomas says that he will not believe. Verse 25, it goes on to say, so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now we see the other disciples who are not part of the 12 speaking to Thomas and yet Thomas would not believe. There was a disorder of belief. Now, when we speak about the apostles, Matthew chapter 10 uh, speaks about the Lord Jesus Christ appointing the apostles and verse 7 and 8, it says, as you go, preach this message, the kingdom of heaven is near, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely give. And then again in Mark chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, the word of God says he appointed 12, designating them as apostles that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. So the apostles were picked, they were set apart, they were commissioned, and in Mark it says, so that they might be with the Lord Jesus Christ, so that he might send them out, and then it says to have authority to drive out demons. But here we see a reverse in the order. Here we see the disciples telling the apostle and the apostle refusing to believe. And here we see an apostle who boldly and confidently expresses to the disciples his disbelief. So there is a change in order. The disciples are now trying to convince the apostle to believe that the Lord Jesus Christ had resurrected. And what I would like to share with you is simply this, there was a change in order. And very often we find in our churches, in our system, there is a change in order. Those who are supposed to lead the younger, those who are entrusted to them into a greater height of belief are on the contrary, being driven by a force of disbelief and they become stumbling blocks to the disciples that God has entrusted to them. And let's take note of that. Thomas was one of the 12 God had appointed him specially so that he might be with the Lord, so that he might preach the word of God, so that he might have authority over demonic spirits and also so that he could lead disciples. And on the contrary, we see that here he was doing something quite opposite of what God had called him to do. Now, the problem was simply this. The first problem, Thomas was not at the meeting place. John 20, 24, we read it before. Now, Thomas called Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. It gives us an impression that others were there, the other disciples were there, the other apostles were there, but Thomas was not there and he was not in the right place at the right time. And because he was not in the right place, he did not receive the revelation that the others received. He was not at the place of revelation. Now, the question we need to ask is simply this, how do we be in the right place at the right time? And the answer is simply this, our lives need to be synchronized with God. Our lives need to be sensitive with what God is telling us. Our lives need to be tuned to the voice of the Holy Spirit.
Now, the second problem with Thomas was this. There was a stubborn refusal to believe. John chapter 20, verse 25 says, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, what Thomas did was he laid down conditions for his belief. He said, unless the Lord showed him certain signs, he would not believe. And I would like to read to you John 4, 48. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus told them, you will never believe. John 6, 30. So they asked him, What miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Now, the situation is this. If we give conditions to God, then we are no different from the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. They gave conditions to God and they said, unless you show us a miraculous sign, we will not believe. Now, the third problem we have with Thomas is that he had selective belief, John 20, 25. He said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, the question that I ask at this point is how did Thomas know that the Lord was nailed in his hands? Or how did Thomas know that the Lord was pierced at his side? He was not at the cross. He did not see any of those things either. But he chose to believe what was physical. He refused to believe what was spiritual. He chose to believe what was possible and he refused to believe what was impossible. He chose to believe what was natural and he refused to believe what was supernatural. And that is the human nature. And that is the nature in which we are built in. And we all have that difficulty. We choose to believe what is physical. We choose to believe what is possible. We choose to believe what is natural. But we refuse to believe anything that is spiritual that contradicts the understanding of our physical. We refuse to believe what is impossible. We refuse to believe what is supernatural in nature simply because it is not natural to our understanding. So in order for us to overcome this nature that is built in within us, that we are prone to disbelief, we must learn to recognize our nature. And when we recognize our nature, we are able to deal with it. And then we are able to take one step further and move from the place of disbelief to the place of belief. And this reminds me of the narrative in Mark chapter 9, where a father of a demon possessed brought his son to the Lord Jesus Christ to be healed. And the Lord Jesus Christ said to the man, everything is possible to him who believes. And in verse 24, he responded to the Lord Jesus Christ by saying, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief, help me overcome my disbelief. And that's what we need to do. We need to tell the Lord Jesus Christ that we want to believe and express to him the struggles we have in our belief and then ask him to grant us the grace so that we may overcome our disbelief and that we may be able to put our total trust, our total faith and our total belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that brings us to the second thing that I would like to share with you. And my point too is simply the Lord Jesus Christ said, stop doubting and believe. We are moving to the second portion of the text today, verse 26 to 29. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them, though the doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. 
Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now, I want to start off by making an opening comment here. The very fact that the Lord Jesus Christ said, stop doubting and believe, tells us that belief is a choice. Believing is a choice and it is a continuous choice, even or especially among the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to believe and we need to believe more and more and more. And that belief is related to our choice of believing. And even as Christians, there are times when we choose not to believe, especially when we go through hard times, when we go through difficult times, when we cannot see what God is doing in our lives it becomes very difficult for us to believe but from the word of god we can clearly see that all we need to do is make that choice to put our trust in the lord we make that choice to believe but let's come back to the text uh, verse 26 says a week later his disciples were in the house again and thomas was with them though the doors were locked jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you his disciples were in the house again and this time thomas was with them it is another gathering of the disciples and this gathering takes place one week later so for one week there was no encounter with the lord jesus christ now i like to highlight this the lord jesus christ after his resurrection he made many group appearances an example of this is in John chapter 21, where we see the Lord Jesus Christ appearing by the lake of Tiberias, where the seven of his apostles had gone fishing. And we see this in the next chapter. So group appearances were common. And let me quickly read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 4 onwards. The word of God says that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures and that he appeared to Peter and then to the 12th, he appeared to the 12th. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. So he appeared to the apostles again. And last of all, he appeared to me also as one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. So Paul says that the Lord Jesus Christ also made an appearance to him. So there were group appearances, but they were also individual encounters, but the individual encounters were very rare. We know in the beginning of this chapter, John 20, that the Lord appeared to Mary in Luke 24, we see the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Cleopas and also another disciple. And in this text we just read, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 5, it says he appeared to Peter. Verse 7, it says he appeared to James. And finally, in verse 8, Paul says that the Lord also made a special appearance to him as one abnormally uh, born. So what I would like to highlight here is there were two types of meeting that the Lord Jesus Christ had with his disciples. He appeared to them in groups, but then very rarely there were some individuals who had a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's take note of that even as we go back to this text, because Thomas tragic situation is that Thomas was not there when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared on resurrection day. So Thomas was in a state of unbelief for a week. So for one whole week, he did not have that hope that the others had. And in Thomas mind, the Lord Jesus Christ had not resurrected and he was willing to make a bold stand to say that he did not believe. So Thomas missed his season for a whole week. He 
did not know that the Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected. He was in that state of hopelessness for a whole week. And I would like to share with you what Thomas actually missed at that resurrection day when the Lord appeared to Thomas. Let me read to you John 20 verse 21 to 23, which happened on the first visit that the Lord Jesus Christ made to his disciples. John 20, 21 onwards, again, Jesus said, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you, verse 22, and with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, verse 23, if you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven, if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, this is what I believe was the resurrection blessing that the Lord Jesus Christ imparted on his disciples who were there on the resurrection day. And because Thomas was not there, this was not imparted to him. And I suspect, and I could be totally wrong on this, uh, so let me be clear that this is my speculation, that the reason the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to the disciples the second time was simply to deal with Thomas' faith, because throughout the whole encounter, the only thing spoken about was concerning Thomas faith and together with that I also suspect that the Lord Jesus Christ made a group visit to deal with Thomas faith because Thomas attitude did not earn him a personal visit. Now let's be clear about this. There is a distinction between a personal revelation and a general revelation. We will not receive personal revelations unless we are worthy of them and our attitude towards God determines whether we are worthy of personal revelations. But then later we see in verse 28, Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God, this is the breakthrough. This is restoration taking place in the midst of the disciples. Restoration comes when we are willing to put the Lord Jesus Christ once again in the center of our lives. And that's what happened to Thomas. Thomas now is convinced of the resurrection and he says, my Lord and my God. That is the breakthrough. And then we see in the next chapter, in John chapter 21, possibly the next encounter that the Lord Jesus Christ has with his apostles, John 21 verse 1 and 2, the word of God says, afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way, Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Now, in this encounter, the next encounter the Lord Jesus Christ has with the apostles, we see a totally different picture. We see Peter, and then we see Thomas name put alongside with Peter, we see the sons of Zebedee are not even mentioned and we see two other disciples who are not named and yet we see Thomas name put in a very prominent position. And I'd like you to capture that because it is never too late when we repent, when we turn back to God, God restores us, God brings us to a special place of grace where God can still do great things in our lives. So let me encourage all of us, we all fall, we all drop into that place of disbelief, we all lose out on certain blessings and yet we can come back to the place of repentance and God can restore us. He can bring us to a different place of blessing where we see his grace once again flowing in our lives. And finally, let me end with verse 29 where the word of God says, Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And we all use this as a verse of encouragement for us 
because we believe in the resurrection, we believe in many things about the Lord Jesus Christ that we have not seen. But I would like to draw your attention to this. The act of repentance releases blessings. And because Thomas repented, because Thomas acknowledged that the Lord Jesus Christ was his Lord, coming to that place of repentance released a blessing, not only upon Thomas, but upon our lives, because by Thomas' action, the Lord Jesus Christ spoke forth his words that will release a blessing upon us. And the blessing is simply this, because we have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ without seeing, greater is the blessing that falls upon each and every one of us. And with that, uh, I would like to end this message by saying, let us put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stop doubting. Let us place ourselves in a place where God can release an abundance of blessings in our lives because whenever we fall into the place of disbelief, we hinder God's blessings, we hinder God's anointing, and we hinder God's purposes from being fulfilled in our lives. Let us come before God in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you because you are a God who is merciful. We thank you because in the midst of our disbelief, you still return to meet with us. We thank you for the example of Thomas, but we confess that we are like Thomas in many ways. We are in the wrong place and sometimes we are in the right place in the wrong time. Father, we want to pray that you would forgive us. Father, we want to pray that just as the Lord Jesus Christ returned to meet with Thomas, you would return to meet with us whenever we fail you. We want to pray that we would learn to be in the right time at the right place, that we would learn to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, that we would allow your spirit to speak into our lives, that we would always take the stand of believing in everything that you do in our lives around us and in the world and father we want to pray that above all through our belief you will bless us through our belief you would bring forth a new dimension of walking in faith with you we want to pray that you bless the preaching of the word and by the preaching of this word we pray that lives of those who hear this word will be transformed in the lord jesus name we pray amen
benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace and the blessings of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us once again at our Golden Lamb Stand online service. The Lord bless you and grant you a blessed week ahead.